So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the BS250. So this is a P-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. This is not the TO92 package, but it's very similar. So I'm not exactly sure what the package it is, so I'm not going to try to say what package it is. But we can see we have the curved side. That is the side with the writing on it. So it's still flat on there but that's where it's curved. It's completely flat on uh, this side of the transistor. So most of the transistors I use, the flat side has the writing. Now, the uh, data sheet, they show the flat side like this and the pins like that for the pin layout. The top pin is the drain, the middle pin is the gate, and the bottom pin is the source. So, the uh, source goes to the more positive side of the circuit there and we have the gate right above it and then the drain up here remember the writing is over here but this is the flat side and so the drain up here we're going to add an LED I'm gonna put the light to a little bit better of a position and we're going to add an LED to make our circuit and I don't know what's with this light it keeps flickering lately so probably need to get a new one so in any case you can see the resistor is to the negative rail and so we're gonna have to put the LED like this so normally I have the anode above the cathode because usually the part of the circuit towards the top of the board is more positive but in this case it's more negative so we gotta remember put the uh, anode down and the cathode up to the resistor which goes to the negative rail. We're using a 5 volt power supply and uh, so a 220 ohm resistor is plenty to protect the LED and more than plenty enough to protect the transistor. So now we have a more aerial view of what's going on. It'll be easier to see. So I'm going to turn the power supply on and the transistor is normally off. That's why it is enhancement mode. So I have a trim pot here so we can get a look at the basic electrical property. We're going to be wiring this as a switch, but using a trim pot, it's not the best of switch. So we're going to the gate. The gate is what controls how well the transistor conducts, the uh, voltage at the gate. So no current flows through. If you did pass current through the gate, you damage it. So that takes high voltage and so you got to make sure you're aware of their voltage ratings and my static electricity may damage it so I'm not taking the best precautions but they're not uh, horribly sensitive while you're prototyping you really don't have to worry about too much maybe you'll damage it they aren't that expensive to replace but in any case the trim pot is about halfway it's a little more positive than negative so we're gonna go that way so it's a 5 volt power supply we are at about 5 volts now probably 4 and then three, two and a half, and whatnot. Now you can see when we get more negative, the transistor starts conducting, and uh, starts fully conducting pretty quickly. So this makes for a good switch, a transistor switch. And why would we want a transistor switch? We can take a voltage, and based on that voltage, the transistor is either on or off. So there's no mechanical parts. There is in this circuit, because I have a trim pot controlling it, but we could have something else controlling it, something electrically that has no mechanical parts, and moving charges, moving electrons does not really cause any wear and tear as long as you keep the heat down, and so they can switch if it's all based on uh, moving charges uh, forever. But uh, in any case, that is the uh, basic circuit, a switch. Uh, pretty common really simple circuit as you can see here so now up here I have a mechanical switch and we will control it with the mechanical switch instead there you can see we have the uh, 5 volt power supply there in fact let's before we go up to there let's take a look at the uh, voltage that we're getting there so generally this is something important to learn about voltage dividers using a trim pot so uh, you definitely want to learn this if you're not aware of this already. The voltage changes based on the position of the trim pot. And also this trim pot kind of gets loose in this board. 
and so we may kind of lose connection once in a while it may go a little haywire but there you can see we're about halfway about 2.5 volts turn it all the way up to the positive rail we have 5 volts and you saw the LED kind of flickering I was kind of losing connection for whatever reason at some point in the board but uh, there you can see now we lower the voltage and the LED turns on so a low voltage to the gate and the gate is not letting uh, current go through so we can put it directly to the power supply which we do with the trim pot when we go all the way to the rails so make sure current is limited if you go all the way to the rail I'm gonna plug this and it does have capacitive effect so as you can see the LED is a certain brightness it's holding there my body it's really sensitive you can see we can influence it and also we can turn it off and if as long as it's off when we break the connection it stays off now my body is giving it a charge but it stores a charge at the gate if you don't have in this case the trim pot here it well, changes the voltage so there's no way the component will hold a voltage at the gate as long as it is at the trim pot it will be whatever the trim pot voltage is so you can think of a capacitor a charge builds up and it can be stored there for a very long time now let's move on to the switch up here so we have a pull up resistor because as we saw before when there's a positive voltage the transistor stays off so my body's giving it a signal it's that sensitive we put it to the 100 kilo ohm this is a 100,000 ohm resistor this one's 220 to protect the LED and the transistor that's a 100,000 ohm resistor it just makes sure that we have a connection to the positive rail a very weak one but as you can see here now we're not false triggering that is our main concern so you can use a high value resistor it just has to be low enough value for whatever circumstances you may have to deal with where it has to hold the transistor gate positive until you want to give a negative signal so on the other side of the uh, resistor there see the jumper it comes to the top part of the switch so the switch is separated top to bottom it is connected across though so you can see I can go here it's just like connecting directly to the resistor right there the bottom is always connected top is always connected top and bottom are separated right there so when I close the switch now we have a direct connection to the negative rail via that jumper there it goes to there and then here a tiny bit of current will go through this resistor here but practically none it's a 100 kilo ohm resistor 5 volt power supply so this uh, transistor sees a direct connection to the uh, negative rail right there a negative voltage to turn the uh, PNP enhancement mode transistor on 